Good morning, everyone. Good morning around the world. Good morning in uh, Rohana and Novata and Deb and Barbara. It's always nice to see you or hear you read your name here. And David, Toronto, and Laura. Hi, Laura. And uh, Elaine and Sonny in China. Hi, Sonny. It's nice to have you. And Stuart, Kathy and Stuart, and uh, Elizabeth and Sedona, and Nick, hi, and Tucson, and Susan, hi, Susan, Jeremy, Wendy, good morning. And uh, yes, I can imagine, Sonny, you're normally asleep. So, uh, Charlie, it's nice to see you. Name here, wonderful, good morning. Victor. In Holland, hi, Catalina, south of the equator. How nice to have this connection with you. Jenny, good morning. Ellen in Chicago, Rosalind, good morning. Dawn, good morning. Chantal, good morning. In Utah, Chelsea in Santa Barbara, Adele, Noala in Ireland. It's really wonderful to have you here and to feel this uh, this rich uh, connection from around the world. It feels to me like the earth has gotten a lot smaller this way. So thank you for being here and uh, starts at seven o'clock. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to our Friday morning sitting. And and I'm um, very happy to be here. And probably this uh, consistent way of becoming happy sitting in a room alone, uh, maybe only had when I've been meditating alone in this kind of way. And so I get to be sitting here meditating alone in a certain way, in a room alone, but with the company of all of you. And it's, uh, I find this delightful and much more than I ever could have imagined a month ago. So thank you for being part of it. So um, before we start, uh, I want to mention that um, this kind of principle, uh, if you want to jump high, you don't stand on your tippy toes first, because then you're not going to get much bounce up. You first want to, if you want to go up, jump up, you first probably want to crouch down, and then you can get a good spring to jump up. And so sometimes we want to go in the opposite direction, in a sense, uh, than where we're going. And... Um, so uh, this principle applies to mindfulness and meditation practice. The idea is we're a little bit kind of coming to crouch down so that we can rise up. And the crouching down has to do with um, really relaxing and settling here in the present moment. 
And there can be a lot of momentum to be for the mind and thoughts to be anywhere but here. There can be even some resistance to being here because maybe it's uncomfortable. There can be uh, 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 a much higher uh, uh, valuing of thinking about things and planning and remembering. And in fact, for some people, the present moment can be boring, not so interesting, or why would I want to be there? But uh, the prince, the idea is to, oh, we're really here, settling really well here, maybe like crouching down, and, and, um, and, and relaxing, relaxing into here. But a particular kind of relaxation, uh, not just kind of becoming slothful or kind of, kind of you know, like a, like a, you know, puddle on the floor or something, but um, a kind of letting go and relaxing that is freeing, that frees up the energies inside, that frees up the capacity for the mind to be uh, uh, present and focused in a strong, concentrated way. Samadhi is not so much something that we engineer or add to our experience. It's mostly a settling away, falling away, a freeing of ourselves from all the things that keep us distracted. So there's crouching and settling and being really here with the idea that as we let go, that um, something begins to get born. And in strong states of concentration, there is kind of like a chi, energy, uh, uh, strength that uh, wells up and really kind of begins to spread throughout the body. And as maybe as I said yesterday, it's um, kind of like a spring, underwater spring, a fountain of water that's f- beautiful, clear, fresh, cool water so coming out of that spring into the water, making an underwater fountain of water. In the same way, as we settle in and free ourselves, free the body energies, there begins to be a flow or glow or a good feeling or a refreshment or a freeing that uh, is the lifting up, the crouching and then the rising that goes on. So uh, that was all a little encouragement to settle in right here with your experience. So if you could um, please take a posture that you think for you will allow you the combination of a, a settling and a letting go and a freeing and an upwelling of your vitality. And then gently close your eyes and to let your attention move around your body to see if there's any areas muscle areas in your body that you can soften and relax. You might go systematically from the head down, softening the forehead. Even if it doesn't soften, for a moment imagine the forehead spreads out and opens up. As you exhale, Relaxing, letting go of the tensions in the eyes. Sometimes there can be tension and in the eyes, it's not even a little bit of flickering. And what relaxing means is to accept that that's how it is. To be easy with how it is. Relaxing the muscles of the face. And 
and softening the shoulders. And this softening, relaxing of this body, the shoulders, is part of this process of crouching, of settling down, relaxing into And as you exhale, softening around the chest, the solar plexus area. Sometimes it's possible to relax the area around the heart. Maybe imagining that the glow of your heart or the warmth spreads outwards across the chest. Softening the belly, letting it hang forward and down, or settling into the pelvic cavity. Maybe there's a way of softening in the arms, all the way down to the hands. Releasing any tension in the area of the elbows. Any tension in the wrists. And any tension or tightness in the fingers. And then down the legs, softening the thighs, especially the top of the thighs. The lower legs, the calves. Down into the feet. And then globally, as if you allow your whole being, your whole body to settle on itself, supported by your chair, your cushion, your bed, whatever you're on. And then perhaps you can feel whatever vitality you might have, wherever the energy or the aliveness of sensations are in your body. And to be gentle and soft about feeling the whatever sensations you have that are inherently part of your being alive, your aliveness. And is there somewhere inside that feels like a spring or a fountain for your vitality. And perhaps the end of the out-breath in the beginning of the in-breath, maybe can be connected to whatever sense of the 
the source of vitality, the beginning of an upwelling vitality as you breathe in. And the whole inhalation, the whole inhalation is kind of a spreading of vitality, aliveness, just in the sensations of breathing itself, with the inhale, sensations of inhalation begin. And those arise and spread and grow a little bit. And then a settling and a letting go and a freeing as you exhale. Every time you exhale, a freeing of your thinking, a freeing of any ways in which you're braced or held or critical or expecting, wanting, a freeing that allows you as you exhale to be simply here. Softly crouching as you exhale all the way to the end of the exhale. And gently, relaxedly, staying close to the rhythm of breathing in and breathing out. Breathing out and breathing in. Crouching and rising. Like a gentle massage, freeing you moment by moment.
part of developing samadhi is to allow the practice to have an influence on you, to allow the practice to practice itself through you, to be open and receptive to what arises, what transforms and changes that might be different than anything you could imagine. A willingness to stay close to the breathing and to be open to something arising and happening.
Then as we come to the end of this sitting, to take a moment in whatever way works for you, whatever way you can, to trust that you have a good heart. To give yourself the benefit of the doubt that within you there is wellsprings of goodness, of kindness, of compassion, of integrity that may not, may not always make it to the surface, but deep inside that's what's there. And if you reach deep inside to touch and feel your goodness, your warmth, your how would you like to express that, live that in the next couple of days? Today, tomorrow, the next day? In what specific ways can that which is the best in you find a way to be expressed in words, in deeds, so that what's good in you is shared with others? And each of us contributes a drop into the ocean of our hu shared humanity. And may your drops, all the drops that you contribute over the next days, be ones that contribute love and goodwill, care and respect, and support may what we say and do carry with it the wishes may all beings be happy may all beings be safe may all beings be free of affliction May all beings be happy. So good morning again, and very happy to be here with you. And uh, the theme is Samadhi, and this is the fifth of the five-part series as part of the longer series on the five faculties. And we have one more faculty to do, and next week we'll do wisdom. And... Uh, I'm going to include another group. I'm starting a retreat tomorrow. So I'm going to include another group into this. And, and so because of that, I'm going to uh, actually give a, another one of these talks Sunday morning at 7. So if those of you who want to do it on the weekend too, you're welcome to come. And maybe it'll be a little bit of a 
more general introduction to this theme that we're doing. Um, <clears throat> so samadhi. I, I like to think of samadhi as being our birthright, that it's kind of closer to a natural state than how most people live. I suppose everything we are is a natural state, but uh, a natural state in the sense that outside of our artifice, our, outside of our, our the ways in which we interfere or get uh, attached or um, kind of uh, make things more complicated or more um, contracted than they need to be, that uh, samadhi happens when we relax uh, all our artifice, all the artificial kinds of ways of constructing and being and protecting and pushing away and holding on. And, and we just settle into a very relaxed, deep, attentive way of being. <clears throat> and, um, and that process of settling and discovering this natural way of being state, um, you know, has, there's a path, there's an unfolding that goes from ordinary life for many of us and so that path, little bit, has been the journey of this week. That the Monday was um, the process of kind of the initiating of concentration, the beginning of it, the starting of it, which is often, you know, we're doing over and over again. And so the centering ourselves in our experience and letting go into it, letting go of things that take us away and keep us scattered and distracted so that we can begin having ex an experience of an undistracted mind, an undistracted body and mind. And once we begin, begin that process, it doesn't have to be so dramatic, we have some capacity to uh, feel what it's like to be centered, to feel here and connected and, and uh, uh, you know, focused. Uh, we'll still wander off a lot, uh, but then we have something like a foundation to begin working with. And then we have this... Um, uh, initial and sustained application of our attention or engagement of ourselves with experience that I liken to pushing a scooter that um, uh, one foot pushes and then uh, we kind of coast for a while until we need to push momentum again. So we, we apply ourselves, we connect to our experience and then we sustain ourselves with the experience over time. We kind of ride it or coast along, trying to stay present. And of course, we'll wander off And uh, at this stage. <clears throat> and uh, that's okay. Don't fight it. Don't be upset with it. Just come back and give yourself another push uh, on the mindfulness scooter and then kind of like move along some more. And as we begin to stay more and more in the, in the present moment in a concentrated way, it kind of builds over time. And uh, the length of time we can sustain with the concentration from a few seconds to many seconds to minutes to longer. Then uh, at some point uh, there uh, this movement of, uh, of being present and coming back uh, supports uh, the mind's ability to become collected, to gather together, to become unified. And so that all of who we are become somehow included or held or, or open to in the experience of samadhi. And um, uh, the idea of uh, gathering together is a classic image, but maybe that kind of implies kind of get, grabbing hold of something and pulling it in. Uh, sometimes I think of um, the unification of samadhi as being we keep opening up the awareness, so the awareness becomes, in a sense, broader and broader, and everything kind of works within that in a harmonious way. One of the reasons I like this idea of sense of the awareness becoming more open is that it uh, goes along with um, the idea that samadhi is also a gift. That uh, we're have to, we have to allow something to move through us. We have to allow ourselves to be changed by the practice of, of mindfulness and concentration. Um, if we're always on top of it, like a mouse at the cat's door, a uh, cat at the mouse, mouse's door, kind of, uh, you know, trying to wait for something to happen. And uh, then we actually interfere because we have to kind of settle back and allow something to occur. And one of the things that begins happening in this flow and unification and this continuity of practice and if that's, is that there's this wellsprings of 
well-being, of good feelings, of niceness, of pleasantness, of joy, of happiness, that sometimes can be quite strong. It's uh, rapture would, uh, or euphoria can describe some of what can happen in meditation. But eventually it moves to a very deep, sublime, peaceful kind of happiness and contentment. And uh, as we can become more uh, content and happy in this kind of just state of being here, it can feel like, in a, like a natural state, like more natural than anything else. Then um, rather than, uh, you know, leaving the real world, we're entering really the real world. This is, this is you know, a way of being really integral, have integrity and being present. So then um, um, we will... Um, uh, I believe that... Uh, so then we come to today. And, um, and the movement in classically in Buddhism is for concentration practice to bring us to a, qual- a state of peace or equanimity, a deep abiding sense of evenness and openness and presence and peace with whatever is happening. Rather than concentration being moving into some kind of rapture, it's going beyond that into a state of uh, deep equanimity. And, um, and part of the reason, to, uh, the, the value of that is that we're not trying to be, develop samadhi for its own sake. In Buddhist practice, samadhi is the, uh, is the foundation for seeing things as they are. And that is one of the goals of mindfulness, of concentration, or the whole kind of liberating path of Buddhism is to see things as they are, to really be able to connect and have a deep insight, a deep discernment, a deep recognition in a very deep way, not only of what, what's happening, but how it's happening, how we're attached, how we're free, um, the under, deep underlying processes of direct experience upon which we build our experience. It's kind of like going down to the foundations and seeing what's really going on. And that takes a lot of uh, subtleness and um, um, uh, uh, deep subtleness and openness and um, to do that. So when uh, there's a wonderful, this equanimity, this subtleness, this peacefulness, uh, I liken to uh, an open hand. So we release the fists of the mind the reaching out of the, of the hand, wanting or resisting or pushing or um, closing up. And, and the hand of the mind of awareness is open like, you know, flat and, and it can hold things. And, uh, and I liken what's happening now in practice to the, the um, ripening of an apple, an apple tree. There's a way of harvesting An apple, if you really want to know when it's really ripe, you don't pull it off the branch. You bring your hand, flat hand, and you hold it up gently and and just kind of, just very gently hold it in the hand, just so you're taking a little bit of the weight of the of the apple. And um, and if uh, it kind of lift it up and down teeny bit, and then if it comes loose by itself, then it's ripe. You're not pulling it because it's kind of on the edge of uh, the separation of, this, of the apple stem from the branch. It's just about fully ripe and just kind of you're there to catch it just as it kind of releases. And so this idea of being able to have a mind that is not f- trying to grab or hold on to or pull away or push, or it just kind of allows things to be just as they are and just the right kind of equanimity, peacefulness, just being with it allows something in the mind to release and to let go in a deep way. And then, with a deep letting go that samadhi supports, we have the fruit. We have experienced the fruit of practice. And that fruit, like an apple, has a lot of wonderful seeds. And even though there's this, it has to be this letting go for the apple to come free from the, from the uh, apple tree, um, if you only focus on the letting go, you might miss that now there's these wonderful seeds or the seeds that are goodness that have been inside of you always, uh, you're the fruit, 
has a chance to uh, germinate, and then a whole new plant can grow, and, and maybe uh, the, a beautiful tree can grow from you, and and uh, the fruit that you have harvested, um, uh, the apple you harvested or re- that ripened and you received, can grow and become many, many uh, apple trees, fruits that you can give to the other people as well and support others. So um, to feel, to experience, to smell, to sense, as concentration deepens, how it moves towards greater and greater uh, letting go, greater and greater settling and harmonizing, and peace. Where is the peace? Where is the, the quiet? Where is the stillness? that uh, allows the fruit to fall from the tree. So, uh, thank you. <clears throat> and um, it is just about the time to stop. And, uh, but I thought maybe, if, as those of you who would like to stay on a little bit longer, um, uh, I could try to take a few questions on this topic of samadhi or something else and have a little bit of exchange back and forth. And... Um, and uh, probably be the, I could well imagine there might be more questions than I can answer, and um, I will try to answer two or three or something that come in first. Um, so, Yeah, I love all the places these uh, you are all of are. Here's someone from Berlin. <clears throat> so, what readings would you suggest for further study of samadhi? Well, I don't mean to be kind of flip or something like that, but um, maybe really, I, I do sincerely feel that the best way to study samadhi is in the book that's in you that uh, you are the book to read. We, uh, part of what we're trying to do in mindfulness and concentration practice is really learn to be present and see what's going on and be able to discern uh, what is healthy and what is not healthy, what is wise and what is not wise, what is, uh, produces more stress and what produces more ease and peace. And as we get wiser about this, uh, that's the book we study. And, uh, and that's the topic for next week, is uh, the faculty of wisdom. And um, let's see. Yeah, so if, um, I, oops, let's see. So it's a little bit, uh, <laughs> I said I would try to do them in order where they come, the questions, but it's a little bit, if I get a lot of chats, it's kind of hard to, Uh, find them. Um, Let's see. So maybe they're, let's see. Wow, there's a lot of thank, thank yous, thank you. I thank you all for being part of this. This is fantastic. Here we go. Nope. Wow. Um, Sometimes when I center on the breath, it leads to awareness of a physical trauma I experienced many years ago. It helps to shift awareness to sound and other things. Can you comment? That's really wise. Uh, If it seems like it's too much, to be with the uh, sensations, the experience, the emotions of the trauma. Yes, uh, uh, you know, do something else like sound. That's very good. Um, sometimes just kind of staying and being with traumatic experiences just makes it worse and, and can be re-traumatizing if it's really strong. 
And so you have to be very, very wise and careful with it. Uh, sometimes there are uh, trauma therapists who really are skilled at working with this. In mindfulness practice, a lot of it, a lot of mindfulness practice is being in the body. And as we cultivate body awareness, if, with time, the body becomes a strong and stable container in order to be able to feel some of the very difficult emotions and feelings that are kind of embedded there from past experiences. And so not only to feel sound, hear sound, sometimes it's useful to spread the attention more widely in the body. Go find someplace else in the body that uh, where it, there's some stability or groundedness or a sense of st- uh, safety even and confidence. And if there is some place like that in the body, that's part of building up the body's capacity to be with the, the, the difficult things that can exist. Um, and then uh, it's also useful, can be useful, to uh, when there's, uh, you know, uh, the legacy of trauma within us that we're going to feel as we're being present, to not see it as a mistake or as a problem, um, to that we don't react more against it, but see it as actually a healthy part of the process of practice and, and, uh, and a fr- a freeing that goes on. And so one way to do this is to, um, when there's these, you know, with the breathing and these difficult experiences, sensations, emotions come up, uh, imagine that your mindfulness is a soft cotton gauze, soft cotton ball. So very gentle and soft. And just gently come close and just tap against the places that are really difficult. Just for one or two taps, just to recognize it, to acknowledge it. Just acknowledgement is so important. And then pull away and pull away as far as you need to get rebalanced and feel like you've, you know, really has to go back into sounds. And when you feel balanced again, there might be a time when you feel you can bring your cotton ball again just to be with it. And over time, you'll feel safer or more secure and more capable uh, to just kind of allow this deeper process of unfolding to happen. I think that there's some all kinds of e- uh, chats here about Sunday morning. It's not on the IMC calendar um, yet. Uh, hopefully, I'll put it up on the calendar today or tomorrow. I just uh, realized just yesterday that I should do this for um, for the Sunday, and um, so it'll be there. But it, it'll be the same time, seven o'clock. Um, so. Okay, so, hope I'm going the wrong way. How do you know if you have samadhi? There's different kinds of samadhi, so it's a little hard to know, but uh, you know you have samadhi if you're uh, really in the present moment and you feel very connected to what's happening in the present. You feel like you're really um, uh, um, um, yeah, there's a wholeheartedness, a subtleness, and it feels very easy and natural just to be with experience. There's not no forcing with the there's no forcefulness, there's no tightness, there's no pressure, no strain. There's a relaxed and open feeling, and you're really there experiencing it, or maybe almost receptively, just being with it, receiving it, being settled and relaxed around the experience, with the experience, and having be able to do that uh, more continuously through time. So thank you very much, and um, and I'm really delighted in and be able to share this with you and be with you. And and I look forward to some of you maybe Sunday and maybe others on Monday when we start the Faculty of Wisdom. Thank you all very much.